Today we're going to be talking about the importance of yesterday's high, low, and the closing price and how you can use that to prepare for today's trading day. Stay tuned traders, we're going to do that next. G'day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today carrying on a little bit further from we've talked about using the high and low. We're going to expand upon that today a little bit more in terms of how to read the close into the US, into the US close. We've talked about the importance of equity opens and if you've been following me now a bit more specifically in the last few weeks, you can see that that's really critical. There's a few situations that will this will open up a lot of opportunities for traders if they can be patient and wait for those opening times. A lot of the stop hunts will come at the opens or they will continue a move and drag traders further away from where the stop hunt is going to occur. So it might bring you a little bit higher on the open so that they can stop hunt low or vice versa or drag you further down into a move before they stop hunt against you. But it's important that we let the, the smart money play their hand first so that we can see what they're doing. Then we talked about the importance of 50s and zeros, the round numbers, the average daily range, the median price, and the quarter levels. We talked about the importance of 12 candles starting one hour before the equities open, the hour of the open itself, and then the hour after. A really simple concept to really understand with that in the, the open of the market is, is that opening move the trap or the trade? That's a question you want to ask yourself. But if you're properly prepared going into the session, you should already have an idea of your plan for either buying low or selling high, depending on what your analysis shows. So I usually have a couple, couple scenarios. My scenario where I've already sort of, I think the market's going up, so I have a buy low scenario for that. And then I have a scenario for if the market does exactly the opposite of what, of what I think, what would my interpretation be in that situation? But that 12 candle window, if you go back and review your charts, and we're going to go through some examples in a second once we go through this, you'll see that almost every day within 12 candles, the market will make a move of 25 to 50 pips. If it's only going 25, chances are you're in the middle of a move when the market opens. So you've been dragged up in that second 25 pips from an original move possibly in Asia. or you're, you're in the move for 50 pips before it consolidates and goes sideways for possibly a reversal or a continuation. But today what we're talking about is looking at the previous day's high and low and the close. Now, if we project the previous day's high into the next day's session, and we'll call that uh, the high and the low, we'll say that this is the, uh, the interday changeover. Let's say the market uh, might have traded in Asia, went up in London, went up a bit more, then consolidated, but then into the close kept going up before it trades in a sideways range for the Asian session. When we have a market that continues its move up, okay, that's entirely different than a market that's possibly been trading, makes, makes a We'll, we'll make that the low, makes a low and then pulls back and goes into consolidation into the close. That's a very different close to a market that's continuing to trend. And what's important about that is that traders will often project that, that high of the day in this situation as the high price, which in some cases um, that may line up sort of similar to how we've drawn it, but in reality what this is is a trend that's gone into consolidation. Some traders will read that as it's taken out the high of the day and they try to trade it short when in reality it's a trend to continue back in the original direction. So it's important that we look at the market. We've talked about the, the typical day is open, high, low, close, or uh, the opposite, open, low, high, close, consolidation. This is, this, this is a, normal trend, a normal trading day. The market's been trading, drops down in the US session, pulls back and consolidates into the close, at which point then we can, we can draw a normal box for our Asian market. 
In this particular situation, we still can get a high and a consolidation, but we would want to be looking possibly to trade in the original direction of this trend, as this is a trending market, not a market that has given us, you know, again, a high, uh, a, a trade, a low point, and a 25 to 50 pip consolidation backwards. Not to say that this market won't roll over and retest that low, which brings me to my, our next point, is the significance of these highs and lows. When you go to the screen each day, and this, this obviously is a trending market. This is where traders will get caught. They will try and short that area, thinking that it's a high, and they'll short that up in this area. But it's a trend. And so immediately they get stopped out. They might hit it again, and they get stopped out. Instead of seeing that this is a trend with possibly a trend line break and a retest and a continuation. But the other scenario that I want you to consider with, with all of this brings us back to our original question that I ask myself every single session and that is where is the money and what's important about these previous days high and low lows okay is that in a normal situation these areas contain money these are stops. Take profit targets, entry orders, stop losses, whatever you want to call them. These are, these are large areas. At the end of the day, chances are the bulk of those are institutional orders. Obviously, there'll be retail traders pooled in these areas as well, and there'll be other areas where there might be interday swings as well from Asia, London, and New York, which again, we want to know from each session which trades are in profit because at some point the market will go back to clear those areas out. Now depending on how you interpret the close and how then we can redraw our box and we talked about plus or minus 25 pips on either side. Typically a market that's going to continue we again we want to look at where is the money. If the market is struggling to get past that 25 to 50 pip mark, most likely it's retesting the low. And we talked about the weekly template. Same scenario, if Monday, Tuesday forms a low, or Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, Friday gives us a consolidation. If we expect that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we could have, or and it could be a Thursday, we might, we saw this last week, the market might go up, and then come down before it does three days of rise and then drops on the last day. So we got one, two, three before it drops. And again, any of these areas up, up top where these orders are, the market traps traders in the wrong direction, goes back, clears off the money, all these, and by this third day of going up, of course, all technical systems would be triggering trend trades you know, moving average crossovers, stochastics, whatever. This last swing is going to trap traders up top. Uh, higher level longs are going to get caught, but all these other traders, if they haven't taken money off the board, will see this market move back quickly. So again, keep asking yourself, where is the money? At the previous day's highs and lows, those areas are magnets. So if we're in a, in a you know, three days of drop or two days of drop, at the high and the low of the week, we talk about the importance of that, which is one of the main reasons we want to stick to trading at the highs and the lows, because once they clear this money out, eventually they may want to go to the other side. And it's important that wherever you're positioning yourself, you want to be able to identify the stops from these previous sessions, because that may be where the stop hunt occurs and the opportunity to participate going back in the opposite direction. So we're going to go through a few examples now on the charts from last week. But the importance of the previous day's low, high, and close, how the market closes, is it trending into the close and, and continuing, or does it actually hit a level, pull back 25 to 50 pips, and go into a sideways consolidation? This will give you a lot of information about where the market might be headed to the next day. And again, if we're in a, in a trend-like situation, the important part of that is to not be trading opposite to the trend and getting caught in a stop hunt 
uh, where you might be getting or hitting a trade in the opposite direction and getting stopped out when the market is just going to continue its move in the original direction. So we'll go through some chart examples now. Again, I just want to point out I appreciate all the questions and the feedback. I'm going to keep trying to get to each question and email as I can. Uh, and each day we're peeling back some of the little layers. This is really important for your preparation going into the next day's session. It can give you an idea of in this particular situation, if you want to be looking for a sell high, so the market, they might come out of the Asian box, drag traders lower right away, thinking they're going to go back down. They get caught with in the early part of the European Open, and then they come back and hit the stops up top before they roll back down to clear the money off the bottom down here. In the previous day's high, low, and close, and how that can help us prepare for the next day's trading session. So each day, at the end of the market, uh, if we look at this week's trading, uh, coming into Monday, we can see that the market pulled back 25 to 50 pips and went sideways, but it also gave us a bit of a trend line from the previous session's low point. Um, what's important about this is that we want to know, number one, has the market consolidated or has it continued to trend? And we can see as the Asian session evolves and we come in later in the European changeover that we have a trend line break and we also have noticed that we're inside of Friday's high and low as you can see we're inside of the blue tracer so if we talked about money being above these areas because we know there are orders there from from the previous sessions trades it's important that we can see if the market breaks that trend line and retests the previous day's high or if it retests the high of the day from the day that we're currently in. And again, you can see that um, we're going to talk a bit more about patterns, uh, patterns that we trade in the next few videos. But we had the trend line break and then the consolidation. And one of the things we look for, we talk about if the market moves 50 pips from a high or a low and goes into consolidation that's an important thing for us to notice because that trade that that consolidation is either going to continue for a measured move or possibly uh, be a reversal and we can see that the market had three attempts to get through this upper boundary as we headed into the london open and we had our redrawn low of the day up high but more importantly we want to know that when the market closed it continued to move up traders who were long off the bottom got their 50 pips and then the market went into consolidation the other thing that we can take note of here is heading into the Europe changeover this is our highest bull candle and we're going to expand upon that later in one of the future videos the importance of a high bull candle and a low bear candle wherever that may be so again as we headed into the session the market uh, moved up 50 pips consolidated had two more attempts before rolling over and heading down. The next day, the difference being, as you can see, as we headed into the close, so the importance of this that we're trying to paint out is that traders will just automatically assume that that previous day's low line means that the market has um, fell away or they redraw the box, all that's important. But when we have a market that continues to move down, that's a trend. And then as it consolidates into our our session changeover again we talked about redrawing our highs and our lows and looking at 25 to 50 pip increment areas as possible areas for the market to reverse and trade off of in the opposite direction and again the importance especially on Monday and Tuesday is that these upper bars are the highs of the week and these are now the lows of the week even though we know we're trading inside of Friday and Thursday's range so again, if we look at Thursday's range, we're trading down towards the low of Thursday, which again, you can see was a stop on on any of the traders who were long from Thursday's bar. But we're drawing the line down so that traders don't just blindly enter in down at the low of the previous day, thinking that's a, a reversal point and going back in. You can clearly see that this market trended down to the low before stop hunting another 25 pips before going into consolidation. And again, we talked about the importance of these areas containing our orders. So the traders who were short up, up top, now there are stops all above this area that we can project across 
as a as a possible magnet for later for the market to head towards because that's where the money is the question that we always ask when we come to the screen is where is the money every single day i want to know where are the profitable trades the highs and the lows of the week the highs and the lows of the previous session so again as we headed into Tuesday's close, the market dropped uh, 25 pips from almost 50 from the high, and then it went sideways. And you can see that this sideways consolidation then in Asia, it broke out of that. So again, even prior to coming to the screen in the Europe changeover, we saw that the market failed to go lower out of that consolidation before shifting up and going sideways. So again, the question as we head into the Europe open is, Who's in profit from Asia? And of course, the market comes down, stop hunts those traders. So if they've gone to break even, they've been stopped out. And then also we know that there's money from Tuesday's high sitting up at the blue line. And even now our intraday high from Asia is sitting there where there's traders who are short or possibly have a stop up top who have traded this move down. So the market breaks up on Wednesday heads through, clears out all the orders before pulling back in the last few hours from the high, 25 and almost 50 from the high. So again, if we talk about the high is at 15.916 and the low of this session is down at 60, uh, 59, that's uh, fit more than 50, pip, roughly 50 pips or plus, plus or minus. So again, the market pulled back 50 pips, went into consolidation in a sideways consolidation before breaking out heading into the Europe changeover. Now again, the importance of this is the highs and lows are where there's money sitting. And we talked about three days in one direction. If this was day one on Tuesday, so to Monday drag traders lower before reversing the trade. We're gonna talk about flipping the book in one of the coming videos where they mar the market makers, smart money, whatever you wanna call them, the banks, they've been short, 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 short. Then they flip the book and they start working on top of all this trap volume and working in the other direction. But they pulled back 50 pips into the close and again, they hit the highs. So they trap traders short, traders are shorting it in Asia, shorting it in Asia, and then they hit the stops, hit the stops, pull back on top of the double zeros and move up another 50 pips. Day one, day two, day three, that's Thursday. We head into the close. So this is an example again, the market pulled back from the low at 86 into the high at 35, 50 pips and goes into consolidation. We draw our lines at the Asian high and low in that consolidation. And again, an example of drawing the most recent major lows, obviously the low of the day, previous day is down lower, but this is a major low where traders have gone long in the New York session. And again, we put our box above Thursday's high because we know there's money sitting up there. The market hits the high in Asia, hits it again, hits it again, hits it again. A third time doesn't go anywhere, rolls over, clears out, does a 50 pip stop hunt, clearing out the money. And anybody who's long in Asia before reversing on an engulfment again off of double zeros and heading north. So again, if we look at Friday night's close, two things. We know where there's money sitting up top from traders being short up near the double zeros. And we look and say that this market has come back almost 50 pips from the high. And we also know that there's money underneath of traders who have gone long in New York off the stop hunt. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see the market either gap down low and stop these traders out right on the open of the session changeover, or even gap up high and stop traders out who are already short. One of the problems with traders holding on to positions over the weekend is that they're, they're inside of a possible trapped situation where the market will gap on Monday and stop out profitable trades. And with the spreads, it makes it almost possible to exit without a loss, even if it hasn't hit your stop yet. So the importance of game, we're gonna look at, a, we'll look at a couple of pairs, is looking at how the market closes. So Thursday, Friday on the British pound is a great example. Traders have gone along in, in the uh, US session 
and they've cleared out the lowest high. This is another trade scenario we'll look at later with weekly peaks and troughs where the lowest high and the highest low uh, are, are areas where we can look for the market to sit on top of heading into the next day session, which is exactly what we saw here. They hit it three times into the close. We have a consolidation after 25 pips of movement from the U.S. close. We just basically put that at numbers, but the market moves through that area in Asia. Now, again, think about this area. These are all areas where there was money sitting. If that market was going to go back down, it would have went down. It didn't. It hit the top again. Clears out traders eventually in Asia who have shorted this market in the U.S. session. So they've cleared out the money up top. It goes up to the top of that double zero box before layering on top. And this is really important. The next area where we know money is sitting is up top. There'd be break even orders somewhere in here, but we know there's money sitting up top where traders have shorted this pin bar in the London session the day before. So again, the importance looking at how the market closes from and also the previous day's highs and lows those are major areas for where there's volume sitting that the market will head towards if we look at the previous day on wednesday again the market pulls back it's in a strong down move it pulls back and goes sideways okay traders are triggered short in the early part of asia but this market drags traders even lower. We talked about this in, on the board. Technical traders using indicators would have been triggered for short trades all through here before it issues the stop punt to the redrawn high of the day before resuming its original trend down. Really important, identify how the market closes. This is not a, cons this is not a pullback and consolidation. This is a consolidation in the middle of a possible measured move. So it's important traders that you look at this type of situation. How does the market close in relation to the US session? Where is the money? And that can give you a lot of insight as to whether you wanna be, sorry, buying low or selling high. In this particular instance, traders went long off the bottom, three pushes by the market, it stop hunts, there was a news release, it hits the stops up top again, before giving traders an opportunity to short the market again, roughly at double zeros before it resumes the move down. So four simple things, highs and lows, equity opens, round numbers, 50s and zeros, 12 candle rule. And then look at your box, your Asian box. How does the market close? Is this auctioning around a medium price level? Are we inside of a quarter level? And then where should the stop hunt zones be plus or minus 25 pips above the box. So hopefully you got some value out of today's video traders. Start looking at how the market closes. Don't just blindly look at the previous day's low as an area for entering a trade. Look at how the market closes. This can give you an insight if you're looking at a continuation trade or if you're looking at a normal day where it pulls back, consolidates, and then you can issue your stop hunt zones and look for a buy low or sell high opportunity. Stay disciplined traders, stay focused, keep getting better. One little subtle improvement every single day, 1% improvement every single day, 90 days. That's, that's a huge turnaround in your trading and also a huge turnaround hopefully in your bottom line. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. Hi traders, it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined and may the markets go with you.